Okay, returning after a weekend, we're returning to our proving ground and getting that submitted and finished off. So if you scroll down to where you post your proving ground number one, your creature in your landscape, there's three components, but the, the first that we need to work on is blending our creature into the landscape. So I'm going to open up that folder. I have a PSD of it. I'm going to open up that PSD in Photo P. Remember, if you use Photoshop on these computers, make sure you log out the Adobe account of the student that was using it before and log in yourself. Or if you just use photop.com, you don't need to worry about the Adobe Cloud services. You can log in and create a, an account with Photop that's free, and you do have some limited cloud storage there, but I wouldn't trust it. You just always want to be saving to your computer and then backing up on your own devices. So this is where we left off. You can see all my layers. We're getting a lot of layers now. And I created something called a non-destructive overlay layer right here. And I'm going to show you how to create that. This is for the creature itself. If it's on normal mode, it looks like that almost like a 3D model where I'm using dodge and burn to like lighten one side of it depending on where the light is hitting and burning the underside. But instead of it being on normal mode, we set it on overlay mode and that only lets the lights and darks come through. And this is how we can change the light direction on our creature. We can burn it underneath. So there's some shadow underneath. We can lighten it and dodge it on top. And all of that helps. But I'm going to erase it, even though I think I did a pretty good job with it, so I can show you how to set it up again. So I'm going to yep, delete it. And let's start from the beginning, basically. So first, what you need to do is bring in your best cutout of assignment two. And we did that with our PNG. So we saved this really clean PNG and then you drag and drop it in and it comes in as a smart object. Right? Then we placed it. I didn't really change mine all that much. I used warp of the tail and of certain things to move it around. But in order to do that, I first had to place it as a smart object, and then duplicate it, and then rasterize the duplicate. So what changes I made, I tried to show you puppet warp, but it kept cutting parts away from the puppet warp wasn't working at this size resolution as well as I would like it to. So instead, I just warped different parts of it, like the hand to fit the hand on the leaf. So this is posing your creature. And I made the tail bigger so that it, it looked more prominent in the composition. And then I'm not going to delete my smart object. It's always good to be able to go back to the smart object if you need to. But I'm going to turn it off with the eyeball. Now, instead of dodging and burning my these pixels directly, the problem with doing that is, let's say I dodge the back of my creature. And remember, you always have to set up your settings when you're first opening Photop. And I'm using a tablet, so I'm going to dodge with a large brush, 0% hardness, at an exposure of 20 or less, right? And I can dodge it. But you know what it's doing while I do that? It's actually getting rid of the color. Because when you dodge pixels directly, it also desaturates them if they're lower than 50% value. And if it's over 50% value, darker than 50% value, it actually saturates them. So this is hurting the pixels. And in digital art terms, this is what's called destructive editing. So I'm going to show you a way we can dodge and burn and affect the lighting just on our creature to match the direction of the lighting of our setting. 
but we're going to do it in a non-destructive way. But before I do that, I'm going to fix my creature in any other ways that I see. And one is that the ear of my creature doesn't feel as aligned as I want it to be. So I'm going to show you, just like I did with the hand and with the tail, I'm going to show you how to, I can internally composite this ear. I can select it. I can duplicate it with Command J. So I now have a free floating ear on its own, on a layer above where I was. I can hit Control T in Photo P. And I'm going to enlarge it a little bit, move it down, and even rotate it and maybe hold down shift and stretch it a bit so that it feels more aligned with the other ear. I can always right click inside of it and warp it a little. If I want to tug this side out, tug this side in. Okay, now because it's internally composited, I like that ear placement a lot better. I think that's an improvement, but I need to delete the ear that's behind it. So I'm going to use, again, this isn't on my smart object. I wouldn't be able to delete from my smart object. I'm going to use my brush at 100%, or I'm going to use my eraser at 100% opacity with a soft-edged brush and just erase behind. And as I get closer to harder edges, I can increase that brush. Okay, now, if I turn that ear off, I can see the overlap I have. And I'm going to use that same eraser at 100% opacity. Maybe a little bit smaller. So we're talking about some details here. And I'm going to blend that new ear in. And this is basic compositing. You have new pixels on top of old pixels and you use it to reveal soft edged eraser at 100% opacity the layer underneath and I like that better so I'm going to save it command s and it's going to update right where I opened it from and the first time you use photo, photo P in a session, it's going to ask permission for changing it, which is kind of nice that it does that. Notice it took the little green dot off of this, which meant that it changed it. It updated it. Okay, now that I've done that, I can merge that ear with the layer behind. And you often want to do that in this stage because you don't want lots of different things floating around that should be combined. So to do that, I hold down shift. I select both layers. Make sure they're both turned on. And then I go to Layer, Merge Layers, which is Command-E for short. I don't hold down Option because I want to collapse them down together. Okay, now instead of dodging it directly and burning it directly. Yeah, I definitely like that ear position better. I am going to duplicate the whole layer. Command-J. And then I'm going to right click on the layer and get my layer styles. So how do you do that? You just, it's not right click. That's how you rasterize. Instead, it's double click on the layer and you get your layer styles. And I'm going to do what's called a color overlay. And the default in Photo P each time you open it is black at 100%. I don't want it to be black at 100%. I want it to be middle gray. And I can actually select that from their options, or I can just push right there. So now I have a middle gray filled in copy of my creature. And now what I want to do is right click, and I want to say rasterize the layer style. So all of those gray, those pixels that I turned to gray I want to rasterize them so that they are really gray. It's not just an effect that's happening to them. Once I've done that, I can change the, the blending mode of that layer from normal to overlay. And if I've done it all correctly, I can turn that layer on and off and it looks like it's invisible. No change. But if I set it to normal mode, it's 
my creature filled in with 50% gray. Okay, next, on overlay mode, now I can dodge and burn it. And when I do it this time, unlike when I do it directly onto the pixels, it's not going to take the color away. Instead, it's just going to brighten the lighting. Because what I'm actually dodging is that gray layer. So I'm going to add a lot of light directionally on this side because that's kind of what's hitting on the, the cabbage blossom there. On the back of the ears, on the tusks of the uh, giraffe horns, the back of the head, maybe on the a little bit down the arm. And then I can also, well, if I turn it to normal mode to show you what I've just done, that's what I just did. All those things that are lighter than middle gray, that's what's showing. And it didn't take any of the color away. It just brightened it up. It's like safely using levels without it affecting the color. Now I'm going to use the burn tool. Same way. Less than 20 exposure. Using a tablet and pressure sensitive. Large brush. 0% hardness. This way I can put in some of these shadows. In the midtones. Now, there is a limitation to the non-destructive overlay layer in that it will never go to black, it will never go to pure white, because what it's doing is always just darkening or lightening from middle gray. And in a way, that's an advantage, because these dodge and burn tools can be incredibly strong. The little core shadow on the tail there. But, for instance, if I think the highlight on this hand is way too much, I'm stuck in something here. Let me see. There we go. If I think the highlight on this hand is too much, maybe on that side that's too much, I can burn it and burn it and burn it in the midtones, and that highlight will still be there. I'm going to overdo it. And notice, I can't get rid of that highlight. That's because the most I can do on an overlay layer is get to black. Okay, but if I go back before I've done all that, I burn it a little bit here, but then I actually want to burn the highlight. Then I can go to the, I can't burn a highlight on the overlay layer because everything's middle gray. So if I burn not the midtone, but the highlight, not much is going to happen. But if I go to the actual creature layer and just really lightly hit the highlight, it will take some of the color away, but it will be able to get some of those brightest whites. And same thing for the darkest shadows. If you want to lighten the darkest shadows, you'll need to go to the, the actual pixels rather than the, the overlay layer. But in general, the overlay layer just adds a lot of dimensionality. See that? Really, really helpful. So those are the first two tasks of your proving ground. To angle the anatomy, if we look at the rubric, you'll see it. It's the second one. It's to match the light direction and the angle of the anatomy of your creature to its setting. And so that's how you do it. Let's save. Not like that. Let's see. Just Command S. Did it update? Did it get rid of my green dot? Let's see. I think so. It didn't get rid of my green dot, but it should be there. And if I'm ever unsure, I can close it all the way. Open Photo P up again. 
I'll just have to redo my settings. 